Hey everybody, my name is Dave and I am here to walk you through setting up VisiBox with Ableton Live. So let's go ahead and get on into that. So basically, the first thing that we want to do, I've got my VisiBox over here and I have Ableton over here. And so what we want to do is go up, uh, well, if you're on a Mac, we're going to open up our audio MIDI setup. Um, and you're going to find your IAC driver. Open this up, and I've already done it, but what you're going to do is just add another port here and label it VisiBox. Okay. So uh, pretty straightforward. Just add a second one and hit Apply. So then you can get out of here. You can close the MIDI studio. And then we're going to go to our Ableton uh, setup. I've got my audio going there. But what we're going to want to do here is go into uh, the MIDI setup and we're going to want to enable the IAC driver for VisiBox and the remote uh, with the output. So we'll be sending output from Ableton to VisiBox. So that is once we've got this activated, then what we can do is uh, go to our VisiBox setup. And if we go to settings here, uh, we just want to make sure that then we have the new IAC driver VisiBox selected in addition to this so that now we're going to be grabbing it from the new IAC driver. We don't need this one, but anyways, they're on. Uh, but this is the one that we are key here. And then what we can do is go into our MIDI map and we can set this, the input, to be the IAC MIDI driver. Um, and then I'm going to be controlling the song order here uh, via the there's a so select song via prog program change via the song order. Okay, so now we can close that. So as you can see here, um, I have a few songs uh, just on different channels here, and each one's just a little clip of some of a, of a track. And then I have set up um, clips in VisiBox. I mean, sorry, in in Ableton. Just a MIDI clip by just double clicking here. I can show you, we'll do it from scratch. Let's say there were song five here. I'm gonna set it up. So I'm gonna rename this song five. So now if we go over here, this should be our stars, right? Is track five. And so in order to make this trigger uh, stars, we wanna assign the program change, which is down here in the clip view. So when you click on it, you come down here, you have the clip on top, and then you have the launch selection. So the first thing we're gonna do is we, we don't want this to be looped because we just wanna trigger the song. We don't want it to then play again and keep re-triggering. So we're just gonna set this not to loop. And then here is the program change. So we can, if we wanna go to track five, we'll set it to five. And so now if we do, if we hit this, you can see that it activated five. Now, it didn't start playing a clip because the clip is on a separate, it is another command. But uh, playing the first clip is C3. So if I were to add a MIDI note here on C3 and then trigger this again, it's going to start our uh, track five and play the first clip. Now, let's say I wanted to then play the second clip here. So what I could do, so I could make this say, let's make it three, you know, two bars long. And I'm now going to add another clip here onto, oh, sorry, I'm going to add another one and I'm just going to put it on the next note up. And so now if we trigger this again, you'll see we'll play the first clip. And now we play the second clip. So you can trigger the different clips in your video. I mean, you could also have other clips that you could then press or you can put them into the same one. Um, and so that is the basic setup. So now I'm gonna show you what I've got set up here. Let's go ahead and stop. So basically I have song one and I have a couple, uh, you know, over eight bars. I switch through to the play the first clip, second clip, third clip. In song two, I go through the clips uh, up and, you know, up and then play this one. Uh, song four, we go up and we play the clips here. Song five. And so you see each of these, or well, song three, and so program three, song four, program four. So when each of these start, they will trigger the song selection of the right song and then the first clip. 
And so then what you can do is whether now this could be uh, a full, tr you know, complete piece of music like this, or it could be um, stems. So you could break out into individual parts. But then what you can do is put them onto a group, even if you, if you like, or just tr um, so that way, yeah, you want to put them into a group. And then this way, when you trigger the front, uh, this play button here, it'll trigger everything in that row. So now we're going to trigger the music at the same time as the video. And then you'll see as it goes through, it will play the next clip. Ready? There. Right? And now if I wanted to go to the second track, right? So I can just trigger the new video and the new song at the same time. Right? Now let's say I want to go back. Right? So we're able to trigger the music and the audio at the same time, which is great. Now, so this was a great way if you want to um, be triggering your own video and you want the, um, or triggering your own audio throughout your set and you want the video to line up to it. Now, some people might want to just use this um, like as uh, to play their backing tracks and just have it play through. So that you could also use the arrangement mode in Ableton. And so I'll show you this. It'll make it even easier to see what's happening here, right? So. I have just our one VisiBox channel, and then we can just line up, you know, individual changes with exactly where we want them to go into the song. So I'll just play this through, and uh, while we're going through, so I'm going to stop. Up, oh, we got to, and you'll see what I've done here. Just the last thing is that I have at the very end of it, I have put a low, uh, so, sorry, C2 which is the stop command. So at the end of our three and a half minutes, we're going to stop. So I hit play and we've got our song coming through here. And then as soon as it gets to this next clip, it's gonna trigger the next clip, right? So it's very simple here to get this set up. And then as soon as we get this, it's gonna to go to the next clip. Ready? So right on time with the beats, exactly where we want it. Now we're going to switch. I just made a little, I wanted it to be short so we can see a few different things. So we're going to switch to song two. Right? And then if I go here. New clip. You know, and so you can line up new clips with breaks and drops and things in your song. Right? Now switch up the vibes of the music at the same time as you switch up the vibes of the video. So it's really uh, it's great, great connection here between Busybox and Ableton. So I'm here one more song. And see, so you can even this way you can automate things as well, tempo, whatever line up all your video clips changing exactly where you want them to. And now I just want to show you again, just to show you, you know, say we're ending and you want the music to end and the video to end as well, well we'll just send it the stop command here and when it reaches C2, our stop command, it will stop the video. There you go. And that is that is our walkthrough of how to set up Ableton and VisiBox to work together so that your clips in uh, that you're triggering or your auto arranged uh, full set um, can trigger the audio. I mean, the video clips in VisiBox to synchronize with the changes in your music. Um, so you can do it in both the arrangement view or the clip view, and both are a lot of fun. It's a really great match. So let us know if you have any comments uh, or questions. Please hit us up, and we'd be happy to help you out. Thanks.